Hello, this is Eric of Spark E Studio, and welcome to my kind of review of the Lewitt Connect 2. Is it worthwhile to get in 2025? Well, let's find out if you should get the Lewitt Connect 2. Now for a quick overview. These are capacitive touch buttons. There's no actual physical pressing of the buttons. And here we have XLR, quarter inch, which is 6.35 millimeter instrument, 48 volts phantom power on or off, monitor output, that's quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter, as well as our headphone monitoring. And the headphone is 6.35 millimeter, which is quarter inch, and 1 eighth inch, which is 3.5 millimeter. USB type C port right here. And we can use a USB 2.0 cable and it works as well as a Kensington lock connection right here. So you can lock it to your desk or wherever you choose to do so, if you want to at all. The weight to it is actually quite firm. You better watch out for that 349 grams of firm weight. It's made of plastic, but it feels like it has some density to it. So it might have some metal internally, but the outside shell is a very hard plastic. It doesn't feel cheap though, and there's no flex. Ooh, I could probably crack it if I really tried right here, but I'm not gonna really try that. I don't wanna break it. The included cable is USB-C to C with an adapter that's USB-C to type A, 150 millimeter in length. Here's my control center and firmware version I'm using in this review. Here is the audio options, LED color options, and custom button options. The Lewitt Connect 2 comes in at a price of $199 US. It has a preamp gain of 72 dB, putting it squarely in the middle of the Vocaster 2, which has a gain level of 70 dB. And at the same price range, as the Personas Quantum ES2, which has a preamp gain that is higher at 75 dB and more input ports plus MIDI. May Ono PS22 Lite, review coming soon. This has a gain level of only 56 dB. However, I can buy three of these for the price of one of these. To find out if this is worthwhile in 2025, I wanna make this quick and easy to understand. This lavalier is connected to my XLR here. There's a DDW lav connected with the XLR adapter. As you can notice, I'm talking down here. That's where my wired lavalier is. And I have a guitar that's connected to this as well. So if you're on PC or something or wear headphones, you probably hear me through one speaker and then the guitar in the other speaker. Now it's a lot more portable. The Lewitt Connect 2 is in my pocket right there. How do you get playing through both speakers? One microphone. It's not the Mi Ono PD400X I'm speaking to you right now. That's simply giving me both speakers. It's open camera. It's not simply open camera. It's a setting. You change audio channels. The channels you change it to mono. Both speakers are working. I tried splitters. I tried with the Rode Wireless Go 2. Yeah, you can do that through the high z port. The channel's phased. Too many splitters. Not good. Try the condenser microphone. And uh, splitting 48 volts phantom power to the high... It didn't sound good. It was bad. And I tried this with a splitter, quarter inch, and XLR. It was very hissy. It sounded decent other than the hiss, but this is the way to go. Now you know. Right now, clip guard's off. I'm going to turn the microphone up a bit more so I can distort. And now I'm going to turn on clip guard. Now clip guard's on. Am I distorting? Right now it's changing my noise floor so it probably gets a little less hiss when I go louder because it's actually just lowering the mic level. And yes, there also is a compressor, but this is also noticeable that's compressing my highs even when I'm not clipping. Low cut is off. Let's do a test. Mic test one, two, three. Mic test one, two, three. Low cut is on. Mic test one, two, three. Mic test one, two, three but I found warm to be almost more, at least with my tone of voice with this microphone. For me, it was a little bit more compressed sounding. I guess warm is more low tone. Mic test one, two, three. 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 Let's try denoise. Wow, 
That is silent, but I can hear a bit of hiss as I speak. But that denoise is very, very effective as far as I can tell through my head noise headphones. It's distracting me. I'm trying to listen to this noise and I hear this little bit of hiss as I speak. Of course, no denoise test is complete without adding some noise to the environment. We have now denoised the room. It seems quite effective. I don't see any noise on my metering. But if we go to the absolute extreme, it doesn't seem to be effective if we just go over the top with fan noise. But nobody should be in that environment. Of course, no denoise test is complete without adding some more noise. And I think this much noise was too much for it to handle. Now, if you want to know how to build a computer that's silent, I might make a video on my tech channel. You're listening to Spark E Studio. I also have the channel called Spark E Tech. Auto gain. How this works on here, let's try it. Press the middle thing. We can see on the screen on the computer, it now blanked out. Gonna press my microphone. Middle again. And you can see it's auto gaining. I speak at regular volume levels. This is a test, one, two, three. This is a test, one, two, three. This is gonna take about 10 seconds. And now, it takes about 10 seconds, which is normal for everything. We just simply watch those lines go across. I can do that on the mobile phone as well. Don't need a PC to do it. Another feature that's kind of unique is if I close this window here, and I was like, oh no, where did the software go? There it goes, pops up. At reboot, it's gonna tell me every time this box is gonna pop up and say it's not connected. It is January 18th, 2025. It is about 2.18 in the morning. I'm running the newest software. And one thing you're not allowed to do is ever disconnect your Lewitt from the Lewitt Connect software. There's no power button. And of course, my audio obviously doesn't sound good to mobile phone right now, does it? Of course it does. That's the problem. This is a mobile device and I'm not allowed to disconnect it. Here, this is what I mean. This pops up every single reboot and there's no option to eliminate it. The Vocaster software doesn't do this from Focusrite. My uh, Universal Audio software is installed. It's, it's not doing that. And I had to click on the system tray icon. Um, my Persona software for Universal Control doesn't do that. Only you, Lewitt, does this. So please fix this. And I'm hoping by making this video that this will be fixed. Fix this, please, and thank you. A 96 kilohertz sample rate. The compressor and denoise is missing. So you have to do 48 kilohertz if you want to use those features. You might want to use 48 kilohertz sample rate so you can get the denoise if you have a very noisy room. Right now that's a video from PC Centric, but you'll notice right now that top setting is called stable volume. Turn that off. What I want to show is the noise floor of this. Now if you're on a mobile phone, it has exact same setting. Go to the settings cog and turn off stable volume. We're going to listen to the noise floor as I turn up the volume. Now let's do this. Right now we are listening to the Fine Fine AM8. This is a dynamic microphone and right now we have it 60 dB of gain and the self noise is really not really there. I'm going to show you the graph for the metering for OBS. And when you see those lines hitting past 60 dB, that means you're getting too much self noise for professional work, but anything that's lower than that is actually good to go. Hmm. Let's continue on. Right now you're listening to headphones and that's the dot you see moving. Nice and smooth. See, no problems there. And I'd be careful that my audio is not clipping because now you're, I'm going louder and quieter. Sorry. So this is high impedance headphone mode turned off. High impedance headphone mode is now turned on. This is the difference in volume through the headphone port. And we see that 
See, it's moving slow and steady. And you are listening to the monitor. You're listening to the monitor right now. That's loud. But yeah. Let's see a couple of really cool features about this. Okay, I'm on headphones. If I press mute, the headphones are muted. And you can still hear the audio because I have it connected to my monitor. That's the audio you're hearing now. I press the monitor. The monitor, but I could hear through my headphones. I mute the microphone. If I go to the microphone, it mutes everything. And if I go to instruments, if I had an instrument connected, I can mute the instrument by itself. You can't tell me that's not awesome. What if I want to mute the headphones and I want to uh, mute? So I can mute multiple things as well. Now that's something I can't do with any audio interface I've ever tried. Doing everything individual, that's a first for me. Some of you may own Neural DSP and are wondering how to connect guitar and microphone together. I'll show you quickly and I'll do a quick demo. Now just to show you my settings on OBS Studio, I have my mic set up as the microphone and I have the desktop actually as the instrument. So if I turn my uh, microphone on, you can see out there that there's desktop audio. Here's my settings, instrument, connect to, because I don't want to get my microphone distorted as well, otherwise I'll control that as well. Subscribe to Sparky Studio and help this channel grow. And if you are subscribing right now or already are subscribed, then you, yes, you are awesome. Now, what are my thoughts on the Lewitt Connect 2? We got mute that we can do individually on any of the buttons. Now that is cool. I've never seen that on any audio interface denoise and that's really a game changer for this and it's really small I can stick in my pocket and I could go on the go connect to my mobile phone go to a music store record a guitar I can go do almost anything with this in a sense now where does this fall short the price point for what you get let's look at the, the personas quantum es2 we have two yes two xlr ports two quarter inch which is the quarter inch is 6.35 millimeter depending if you're in everywhere else other than the US and Canada. One quarter inch port, which is for the instrument, but you could put a microphone in it. Tone is really good on here. It is comparable to this evenly priced unit. It has a better tone than the Vocaster 2 that I reviewed on the channel. Now, if you don't want to bold tone your voice, maybe this wouldn't be the right sound for you, but most people on average will prefer the sound of this or over the Scarlett 2i2 Gen 3, for example. Game streamers will love this and podcasters will love this. And a person on the go, if you're a vlogger, honestly, you'd probably want this because I can't go on the go with this. I need a device or a laptop that has enough power output. It has to have more power output than USB 2.0. It has to be at least a 3.0 port and it has to be from your device, a USB-C port for it to even work to this. And I can't use it with a mobile phone without supplemental power. And even that was, it would work sometimes and not the other times. Review is coming soon. The Personas Quantum ES2 compared to the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X Gen 2 with a touch of the Connect 2 because one person voted they want to see that in the review as well. Poll is still up. Add your vote. Otherwise, it's going to be a small little touch of this in that. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.